A very good evening uh, to all dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, we thank our Heavenly Father and Lord and Savior Jesus Christ uh, for giving this wonderful opportunity to discuss uh, His wonderful words of life. Uh, so today we are going to see a very very important city that was built. Uh, a very huge city and a very famous city. And that name of the city is Babylon. So we all know Babylon was not one of the a smaller cities, it was one of the greatest and the largest and the biggest city, you see, and uh, it was one of the ancient wonder of the world. See, the Babylon city was, uh, was such huge that it had a gigantic, uh, you see, fort. Uh, the fortress itself uh, was very thick and a very huge fortress it had, uh, you see, uh, the walls uh, of uh, the Babylon was nearly 100 feet uh, wide, uh, you see. I don't think you have any roads in Nepal which are 100 feet wide. So, the, the walls of the, you see, fortress was 100 feet wide. 100 feet wide means, you see, uh, the chariots uh, with four horses, uh, each chariot used to have four horses and such uh, uh, chariots, four chariots, uh, is to continuously run at a time on the you see, walls of Babylon continuously. Imagine such a wide, uh, you see, wall, not a hollow wall, a solid wall. You see, such was the fortress of uh, Babylon. It was so big uh, that it had, uh, you see, um, uh, 250 vast towers. Uh, you see, here and there, here and there, so much of vast towers. Uh, and nobody could easily enter uh, Babylon. You see, the Babylon had more than 100 huge brass gates. Uh, you see, so such was the uh, beauty of Babylon. And uh, Babylon was built upon the river Euphrates. Uh, as it was built upon the river Euphrates, uh, there was no famine in Babylon at all. Because water is to continuously run inside the city. And always there used to be waterfall cultivation and uh, all other activities. Hence, uh, you see, Babylon was also famous for his hanging gardens. Why? Why it was famous for hanging gardens? Why gardens were built in Babylon? If you see, actually, you see, the king of Babylon had married uh, a princess uh, who was from uh, a cool country. You see? Uh, so, as uh, she was from a cool country, and the Babylon is in Iraq, a very high temperature place, uh, she could not stay there. So hence, she decided to return back to her hometown. And uh, the king loved her so much that he decided uh, to uh, make his city a garden city. You see, hence he built the Babylon upon uh, river Euphrates, where water used to continuously flow. And there used to be always water for plants. Uh, you see, and a beautiful garden was made in Babylon. And not only, you see, uh, Babylon was famous for its gardens, one of the seven ancient wonders of the world. You see, the Babylon was also famous for his uh, gigantic golden statues. Uh, you see, multi-metallic uh, images uh, and beautiful, uh, huge, huge uh, uh, statues. So let us read uh, Daniel 3.1. Daniel 3.1, brother. Uh, Rome Minister, can you read Daniel 3 1? Okay, brother, just a second. Nabu Nabukadnezar, the king, made an image of gold. Those whose height was uh, three score cubits and the breadth thereof six cubit, he set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Mm. See, here the size of the golden, uh, you see, statue is given. It is uh, 90 feet high, it seems. And nine feet of width. That means it was not an ordinary statue made of uh, 
a hollow gold. It was made of solid, pure gold. Imagine 90 feet high. You see, uh, in your place, uh, is there any such idle, big idol in your place? Isn't it? Just think a 90 feet high statue made out of pure gold. So Babylon was famous for gold also. Golden statues were raised all over the places. Hence, uh, the Bible called Babylon as the golden city. Let us read Isaiah 14.4. Isaiah 14.4. Uh, uh, Munna sister, can you read? Then thou shalt take up his, uh, this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How hath the oppressor seized the golden city seized? Very good. The golden city seized. And it was the glory of all the kingdoms of this world, dear brethren. So hence, uh, Babylon was famous. Uh, and uh, this uh, Babylon could never be captured. None of the kings could ever think to destroy or attack Babylon. But in such a case, you see, King Cyrus, a Medo-Persian emperor, he decided uh, to, uh, you see, and destroy Babylon and conquer Babylon. Then uh, Cyrus came and uh, he laid uh, siege for his Babylon. But unfortunately, even after laying siege for many, many years together, they could not enter Babylon. So Cyrus thought, 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 uh, what to do? How to capture this Babylon? We're not able to do anything. We can't enter the, the uh, gates of Babylon. It's so strong. And the walls are so high and so thick. Uh, so it's not possible to go inside then, dear Bhutran, you see, eh? that is the time that uh, Cyrus studied well about the weakness of Babylon. And so, you see, the water was uh, the weakness. Uh, you see, that means uh, if nobody could enter Babylon, the water was always continuously entering Babylon, you see, through the water channels. Uh, and even those channels uh, were so filtered that uh, they used to be you see, brass cages, you see, only the water is to go, not even the crocodile or fishes is to enter Babylon. So, such was the condition of Babylon. So, King Cyrus decided that if we have to conquer Babylon, we need to go through this passage of a water channel. Then, King Cyrus decided to dig a channel to divert the waters of uh, Babylon around the Babylon instead of going through Babylon. So the people began to dig, 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 dig. And uh, once, uh, you see, uh, King Belshazzar, you see, he was the Babylon emperor. He saw from the walls of Babylon and he laughed. Oh, these fools are making a digging uh, something. You see, uh, they're not able to capture our city. So they used to make fun. And that night, you know, the king made a great party. Read Daniel 5.1. Daniel 5.1. Joel, brother, can you read Daniel 5.1? Okay, brother. Belshazzar, the king, made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Very good. So, before the thousand... Made a great party for a thousand. Then, next, what did you do in that uh, party? Verse 2 and 3, brother. Huh? Belshazzar, whilst he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver bezels which his father, Nebuchadnezzar, had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem, the, that the king and his prince, his wives, and his con uh, concubines might drunk, drink therein. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem. And the king and his prince, his wives, and his concubines drank in them. Ah, you see? You see, he, get a, he made a great party. There's nothing wrong, but he, great, he made a great mistake uh, by drinking the same wine and pouring it into the cups of the sacred vessels uh, used in the tabernacle. They were taken captivity. So all these vessels were in the treasure house. 
We're going to bring all this uh, precious treasure of uh, vessels uh, used for God's service. He put wine and gave toast to these gods uh, and uh, drank wine. This was the greater sin. So as he was drinking and making fun and merry, you see, you see, toasting for the gods, uh, comparing uh, the God of Israel to other gods, uh, you see, immediately a hand uh, without human body came in, right, uh, something on the wall. See what happened. Verse 4 and 5 of the Joel, brother. They drank wine and praised the God of gold and of silvers, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. In the same hour came forth finger of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. You see, something came and wrote, oh, just a hand came and wrote something on the wall. You see, as soon as the king saw this one, Immediately, you see, the, all the, you see, the wine which I drunk, it came down. It began to tremble and shiver. Read Brother 6, Brother. Huh? Six, Brother. Hmm. Then the king's countenance was changed and his thoughts troubled him so that the joints of his Lines were loose and his knees smote on against another. Ah, you see, the joints uh, began to smart one another, lines uh, became loose. That means his belt became loose, began to shiver, tremble. You, what is this? Uh, hand came in written on the wall, uh, David ran. So nobody was uh, able to interpret uh, this uh, writing on the wall. So, as usual, we know that if something happens in Babylon, they call all the wise. Uh, astrologers, soothsayers, uh, you see, and uh, wise people and to interpret this one. And uh, they, uh, similarly, you see, Belshazzar also called all the wise men, but none of them were able to give the proper answer. That is the time that uh, Belshazzar's mother, that means in the Bible is given as mother, she is a grandmother, she came and told how Nebuchadnezzar also faced the same situation and when he called Daniel, Daniel was able to interpret it. Trends, uh, you see, they call uh, Daniel. They call Daniel to come and tell the interpretation of it. Uh, see, what does Daniel tell? Uh, Munar sister, can you read from verse 18 to 23, sister? Okay, brother. 18 to? 23, sister. O thou king, the most high God, give Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor. And for the majesty that he gave him, all people, nation and languages tremble and fear before him, whom he would he slew, and whom he would he kept alive, and whom he would he set up, and whom he would he put down. But when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride, he was uh, deposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him. And he was driven from the son of man. His heart was mad like the beast and his dwelling was with the wild asses. They fed him with grass like oxen and his body was wet with the dew of heaven. Till he knew that the Most High God ruled in the kingdom of man and that he appointed over it whomsoever he will. Ah, see, here you see Daniel tells clearly how similarly Nebuchadnezzar because of his pride was humbled. You see, he was so proud of himself that he boasted that oh such great Babylon I have built all these things and all. But suddenly, you see, the very same day, he was cast into the forest, uh, you see, and uh, he ate grass like an ox uh, for seven years. And none of the officers uh, were able to find uh, Nebuchadnezzar. But after seven years, when he realized his mistake, uh, 
his senses came to him and he was uh, uh, restored back to his uh, kingdom. And Daniel mentions this one and says, Though, O king, O Belshazzar, though you knew all these things, you never thought of humbling yourself before God. Read verse 22 and uh, 23, sister. And thou, his son, O Belshazzar, hast not humbled thine heart, though thou knowest, knewest all things, all this, but has lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven, and they have brought the vessel of his house before thee, and thou and thy lord, thy wife, and thy concubines have drunk wine in them, and thou hast praised the gods of silver and gold, of brass, iron, wood, and stone, which see not, nor be hear, nor know, and the God is whose hand thy breath is and whose are all thy ways hast thou not glory glorified ah even though you knew all these things you are lifted yourself against god you never humbled hence this writing has come upon the wall now, what was the writing that was upon the wall uh, let us read verse from 25 to 28, verse 25 to 28. Gopal brother, can you read verse 25 to 28? Okay, brother. And this is the writing that was written, Mene Mene Tekel Upersin. This is the interpretation of the thing, Mene, God had numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Tekel, thou art weighed in the Ways in the balance and art found wanting. Paris, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persian. You see, mene mene tekel uparsin. It was written in the Hebrew language. None of the wise men understood. But Daniel came and said, mene means God had numbered thy kingdom and finished it. So tekel means thou art weighed in the balances and found wanting. And Paris means thy kingdom is given into the Medians and the Persians. So, you see, as uh, Daniel interpreted the dream, so the, the king was very happy, he honored Daniel, but uh, and promoted him also, but his promotion was only for a few moments. Because the very same day, Cyrus king entered Babylon and destroyed Babylon. Read uh, verse uh, 30, brother. And 31. Go ahead, brother. Hmm. In that night was Belshazzar the king of the Chaldean, Chaldean land, and Darius the Median took the kingdom, being about three score and two years old. Very good. So the very same uh, night, you see, Cyrus came and killed the king and took over Babylon. You see, dear brethren, you see, how was it possible if you see, you see, it, they diverted the waters which were entering Babylon and how in the place of water, all the soldiers entered Babylon and one night Babylon was thrown down. Read Isaiah 44, 27. Uh, Romy sister, can you read Isaiah 44, 27 sister? Okay, brother. 44 27 that's it to the deep that's it to the deep by dry and uh, will I will dry up thy rivers very good so say to the deep but I will dry out thy rivers. So this is very same fulfillment happened. The river of Euphrates was dried when it was diverted. So in this place, the soldiers of Cyrus entered inside and destroyed Babylon. So as uh, you see, Cyrus came inside. Uh, you see, he saw the writing upon the wall. Many, many takel upar seen. So he was wondering, what is this interpretation? You see, then all the wise men, they told uh, the as king was making merry with wine, suddenly a hand came and wrote all these things. This is the meaning of all these things and all. 
then nobody was able to interpret the word daniel came and interpreted uh, then saidas called him you see how uh, daniel interpreted the saying that many many take alupars in that means the kingdom should be handed over to the medes and the persians so saidas king was very happy seeing uh, daniel and how god had guided uh, you see uh, it was god's will that uh, you see uh, babylon was to be taken by cyrus and his name was written in the bible you see then daniel met him uh, he told that you are god sanented you are god shepherd through whom god is uh, given the victory through uh, you see and uh, babylon is destroyed so immediately cyrus was so happy that uh, you see because he knew very well that babylon could never be captured he knew it very well it's very difficult to capture babylon but uh, if he has captured it is only because of god's will that also he realized and she wanted to honor that god and she told whoever is in babylon you see who wants to return to their home place let them go and build a god's temple in israel he gave them permission to go and build a god's temple return to jerusalem and worship you see eh? worship god dear brethren so in the bible in bible cyrus is called as god's anointed let us read isaiah 44 27 to isaiah 45 verses 2 uh, joel brother can you read isaiah 44 last two verses to isaiah 45 first two verses okay brother that said of cyrus he is my shepherd and shall perform all my pleasure even saying to jerusalem thou shalt be built and to the temple thy foundation shall be laid ah thou art my anointed thou art my shepherd you see then continue with that ah thus said the lord to his anointed to cyrus whose right hand i have hold on to ship subdue nation before him and i will loose the lines of kings to open before him the two lip gates and the gate shall not be shut huh? i will go i will before... open the gates it should not be shut god open the gate god gave the clue then continue brother huh? i will go before thee and make the crew place straight i will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron ah, i will go before you open for you the gates of brass make the way the crooked way straight how the waters go crooked no see it was made straight very clear by cyrus to go ah now read isa 45 brother one and two brother again brother no oh i is a 45 one and two is finished yes brother finished okay so here cyrus came to know that he was chosen by god so and see a lot of the people of his to worship god now okay now what lesson do we have from this babylon you see where do we read the first uh, time you see in Bab about babylon in the bible in genesis 10 chapter where the people began to build a huge tower to reach to heaven babel in genesis 10 chapter they had all one common language hence they began to build a tower to reach heaven and god saw from heaven that it was confusion hence god you see confounded the language you see so that one did not understand others language dear brethren you see that how the people got scattered all over the world you see but there is one more babylon that is given in the bible in book of revelation let us read about that one in revelation 17 1 to 5 uh, muna sister can you read revelation 17 1 to 5 okay brother read only verse 5 and upon her forehead was a name written mystery babylon the great the mother of her lords and abomination of the earth you see the mother of her lords the abomination of all the earth you see abomination mother of all babylon great mystery 
So when Babylon is already destroyed in Genesis 10 chapter, it's already destroyed in days of Belshazzar, then how come there's a Babylon that is mentioned in the Revelation? This Babylon is none other than the false churches where there is a lot of confusion. You see, as they are all a common language, they used to build a great tower to reach to heaven. So similarly, today, the whole churches of this world have only one common language, one common man, Jesus Christ. Everybody are holding to Jesus Christ. You see, and they claiming that we are the gateway of heaven. We are Bethel. We are the gateway of heaven. We'll go to heaven. As a man believes in Jesus, he shall be saved forever. So that is, the, you see, huh? the confusion. You see, when we say a soul dies, they say that soul doesn't die. But uh, there is a resurrection. If soul doesn't die, then why there is a resurrection? You see, confusion. Our God is three, three God, three in one God. First, make it clear whether it's three or one. You see, even in that one, confusion. Confusion. That is the word Babylon means. Therefore, dear brethren, in the whole world, all the churches today are confused with the confusion doctrines, dear brethren. So there, you see, the Babylon, in the olden days, it was built upon river Euphrates, so similarly, the great Babylon, the false churches today are supported by the people. It is the people who are being supporting this false system. Hence, we read in the Bible that, uh, you see, this woman is sitting upon the waters. Read Revelation 17.5. Revelation 17.5. Uh, Gobal brother, Revelation 17.5. 17.15, sorry. Revelation 17, 15, and he said unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the war seated, and peoples, and multitudes, and nations, and tongues. Ah, the waters which you see, the war is sitting, ah, the false church is sitting, is the people, nation. The people, the nation, the whole world are today supporting uh, this one. She is sitting upon the great beast. You see, we have studied about the great beast, uh, the Roman Empire. You see, the Roman Empire is the one who is supporting this great false Roman Catholic and the Protestant denomination. Okay. So, what happened there? Even as they were, uh, you see, uh, drinking, making merry, you see, God's government came. Now, how did they drink and make merry? You see, they drank from the vessel, the cup of the Lord, a golden cup. Now, see here, how is this woman? Revelation 17, brother. Revelation 17, uh, Verse uh, 4. Uh, Revelation 17, verse 4. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. See? She's having a golden cup. But inside uh, the golden cup, what is there? Full of abomination, filthiness, uh, fornication. You know, what is this golden cup? This golden cup is none other than the word of God. See, God's Bible is a golden cup. It was used in the temple. You see, God's uh, church. You see, God's temple. Yes, yes. Uh, that is uh, the God's uh, church. You see, where the word of God is used. But, you see, the Bible is there in everybody's hand. But what is there inside? You see, dear brother, inside the golden cup, inside the Bible, they are filled with the filthiness of her fornication. That is a false doctrines. You see, full of toxic wine. You see, what happens if a person drinks? You see, he loses his conscience. He is not able to understand and recognize everything. So, that is the same condition of today, the whole world. All the false Christians, they drank the wine in such a way that they are not able to understand the truth at all. Therefore, you see, in Revelation, uh, you see, for 17 chapter, it says, no, uh, uh, verse 2, verse 2, brother, uh, Revelation 17, 2. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, 
and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Ah, the whole world are drunk of her wine. Now what happens to the person if he drinks wine? Let us read Proverbs 23rd chapter. Uh, Romister, can you read Proverbs 23rd chapter? Verse 29 to 35, one by one, we'll see and go. Okay, brother. Amar brother is there. Uh, can you read? Yes. yes. yes oh, please. Yes, no, no. Amar brother, please. 23rd chapter, Proverbs, verse 29 to 35, brother. Twenty nine <clears throat> to thirty five. One by one verse. Uh, you please read. We'll. Uh... Okay. Hmm. Who hath who? Who hmm. hath sorrow? Ah. Who hath uh, continuations? Ah. Who hath um, babbling? Who had wounds without cause? Who had a redness of eyes? Hmm. They that. Tarry long at the wine, uh, they that go to seek mix uh, wine. Ah, see what does the Bible say? Whose eyes are red, uh, huh? Who speak babblings, keep on uttering some nonsense which nobody can understand. You see, who has contentions, always keep on drunk people, keep on quarrel without any cause, make a small issue, a very big issue. Huh? What does the Bible say? They the tarry at wine, mix a drink, cocktail. You see, similarly, this is the condition of the whole world, the false church, dear brother, the false Christians. They have drunk the wine in such a way that uh, they simply have contentions, argument. Even if you tell the truth, they won't accept the truth. They simply want to argue, simply speak. They keep on arguing, they keep on babbling, babbling is what? Utter things which they don't themselves understand. If you speak like this, they'll speak like that. If I speak like that, they'll speak like this. None of the teachings are harmonious at all. You see, confusion, confusion. You see, their eyes are red, very anger. You see, if you don't go to the church, they scold you, they punish you. They scold. You see, they screw you, happiness, judgment will come, all these things and all. Only cursing. You see, then who are these people? These are the people who tarry at mixed drink. That means all, all doctrines you mix and drink it off. False, truth, everything. Confusion is confusion. Utter confusion. Then, uh, verse 31, brother. Uh. Look not thou open the wine when it is red, when it uh, give his color in the cup, when it moves itself all right uh, all right at the last it uh, beats like a serpent and the sting it like an uh, adder uh -huh. see how is the see, wine I... huh? solomon advises don't look at the wine and be deceived it looks good in the glass golden golden chamak 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 color but once if you drink it, what happened? It will slowly enter. And once if it goes inside, serpent, it will bite like a serpent. Some people tell, oh, nothing will happen. Take, take, little bit. Uh, it will go smoothly. Once if it goes inside, then only it will start the reaction. This is the same way of the false doctrine. See, we should never be attracted to the false doctrine. You see, once if you are attracted, you see, if you keep on hearing these things, the serpent will bite us. You see, initially it will be nice to hear, but once if it goes, it will be like uh, Satan attacking us, dear brother. We will be in the clutches of the devil. Then what will happen? Verse 33, brother. Next. Huh? Thine eyes shall behold strange women. Huh? Thine eyes shall behold strange women. Huh? Continue, brother. And and thine heart shall utter uh, perverse things. Ah, you shall yeah. see strange women. Women in the Bible means church. You should only see the false church. You don't want to see, understand the true church at all. Because truth is not respected by such people. You see, they're not able to understand it. They'll speak utter nonsense. 
you see no truth in their mouth at all only false 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 teaching take money tongues miracles trinity hell soul second coming antichrist every doctrine you take it is utter confusion the lord's memorial supper you see confusion confusion then next brother verse 34 ah uh. ye thou shall be be as he that lieth down in the midst of the sea or as he that lieth upon the top of a mast ah how a drunkard will be he will it will be as if he is uh, sleeping on the water water bed huh? or else on the you see huh? top of the mast on the peak of the you see the must which is on the ship can somebody hang there we wavering like this is if you can you sleep on a water we'll keep on wavering like this similarly one who is drunkard their walk their path their sight is not proper at all they wavering once this side once that side you see huh? how they will be huh? today they will be in the truth tomorrow they will have gone out of the truth you see going somewhere else eh? instead of uh, learning the truth uh, because they are intoxicated they drunk the wine false doctrine has entered so much uh, they can't take this evil out of them at all you see they don't have self control they were not able to judge out properly you see huh eh? they will be all strain strings you see huh eh? one bus will be coming but they'll come oh hey, four four buses are coming hey, which bus i should go huh eh? Same way. Doctrines are not able to understand. Then verse 35, brother. Huh? Then have, uh, they have stricken me. Shall thou say, I and I was not see. They have beaten me and I felt it not. When shall I awake? I, I will seek it again. Uh -huh. You see? What does you say? They have stricken me. But uh, nothing has happened. They have beaten me. I did not feel it. You see, when I shall awake, I will seek it yet again. You see, even if you beat a drunken man heavily, doesn't even care. Simply stands and walks. Because he is not able to release the pain. But uh, after all this has come down, again you will desire the same thing. This is the condition of the all Christians to them. Even God punishes them, spites them, chastises them. They don't realize their mistakes at all. They simply go to the false doctrines, false churches. This is the mistake which the great Babylon did. Using the golden cup of the Lord, the Bible, they put all these false doctrines. Hence, what did God decide to punish Belshazzar? Mene, mene, take a lupar sin. Similarly, God's judgment has come to all the false churches. Come out of her, my people. I am going to pour out my plagues upon her. Read Revelation 18 chapter verses 1 to 4. Joel brother, Revelation 18 chapter 1 to 4. Okay, brother. <clears throat> and after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory, and he cried mightily, with a strong voice saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the whole of every uh, fall spirit, and a case of every unclean and hateful bird. Mm. Babylon is fallen, fallen. It is fallen from God's gaze. It is fallen. It's become the habitation of devils. Foul spirit, not Holy Spirit. There is no Holy Spirit speaking in tongues which are unknown language. That is God's Holy Spirit. Don't know when to do the Lord's Supper. That's God's Holy Spirit. Eh? How come it's God's Holy Spirit? Nonsense guidance out of the scriptures. It is a place of all filthy birds. Doctrines, false doctrines. Satan has come and sat there. Continue with the next. Huh? For all nations have drunk of the wine of the red of her fornication and the kings of the earth had committed fornication with her and the merchants of the 
earth works rich through the abundance of delicacies. See, all the nations have drunk uh, of our wine. They are completely forgotten. They are completely immersed in that wine. They completely, you see, that, uh, that, uh, that uh, toxication has come to them. You see, they are not stable. They are not able to recognize the truth. False prophets, all selfish. You see, today all the priests are selfish. They want only money. You see, you can read these verses later. Jeremiah 23, 16, 17, chapter 25, 26. Mika, 3rd chapter, 11th verse. And Jeremiah again, 6th chapter, 13th verse. Ezekiel 34, 2 to 4. Ezekiel 13, chapter 3 to 5. Mentions about the false prophets and the false teachings. I simply tell God has spoken to us. God of peace is there. No need to worry. God will help us. While they do all sorts of filthy things which are against God. How? Oh, God will be with them. You see? Hence what happened? The sin of Babylon has reached the sky. The tower was built to reach the sky. Similarly, Belshazzar's sin reached the sky. What did God command? Read with Revelation 18, 4 uh, and 5. Uh. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plague. For he is her, her sins, sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Ah, sins are reached to heaven, and God has remembered her iniquity. Babylon is fallen, fallen. My children, you see, come out of Babylon. So God is calling God's children out of Babylon because Babylon is the fallen. It is no more under God's guidance. Read Jeremiah, you see, 51st chapter. Jeremiah 51st chapter, verse 7, 8. Revelation, sorry, Jeremiah 51, 7 and 8. Amuna, uh, sister, can you read? Okay, brother. Babylon had been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nation had drunken of her wine. Continue. Drunken. The nation have drunken of her wine. Uh, therefore, the nation are mad. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroy house for her, take blame for her pain. If so be she may be healed. He would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her and let us go everyone into his own country, for her judgment reaches unto heaven and it lifts up even to the sky. Ah, you see, Babylon has been a golden cup. God has tried to heal Babylon, you see, and correct them several times, but they are not corrected. You see, you remember so many brethren were there. You see, we have tried to correct them so many times, but they are correct. Why? Babylon spirit. They brethren, you see, because they are completely drunk of that wine of false doctrine. So what did God say? We would have tried to heal Babylon, but she is not healed. So what is the remedy? Flee Babylon. Come out of Babylon, dear brethren. You see, our as God will shortly pour the plague. You know, the Bible says, you know what happened? The King Cyrus dried the river Euphrates and instead of the river, he went at Babylon, destroyed it. Similarly, Jesus has already come in the second coming. We know very well. So Jesus is shortly going to pour this a oh, well, plague upon river Euphrates. River Euphrates shall be dried. Upon which Babylon is built. Read Revelation 16, 12. Revelation 16, 12. Uh, Romy sister, can you read Revelation 16, 12? Okay, brother. Um, 16, 12. Yeah. And... And the sixth angel poured out 
his veil upon the great river Euph Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, and the way of the king of the east might be prepared. Very good, sir. So, what happened is uh, the plague was poured, the veil was poured, so that uh, the king of the east uh, might come inside. Uh, you see, make way for the king of the east. Uh, Euphrates river was dried. We know what is the meaning of Euphrates uh, river. Remember the four rivers, what have we done? The fourth river is the river Euphrates. So, Euphrates river represents the world, uh, the world mankind. Once this uh, truth is poured upon the world of mankind, uh, they won't go to these churches. They won't support these churches. So automatically what happened? The waters will dry. Then Jesus will enter uh, Babylon, you see, and destroy it. He is the king from the east. Uh, you see, east, what rises in the morning? What rises in the morning from the east uh, direction? Tell me. Sun. Very good. So Jesus is the son of righteousness. The second coming, you will enter Babylon, destroy Babylon as Cyrus king entered. He was a chosen shepherd. You see, he was uh, God's anointed. Before him, God went and opened the gates. Same way, dear brethren. This truth shall be poured. And as Daniel interpreted, the very same night Babylon was destroyed. Similarly, the Babylon, the false churches shall be completely destroyed. Read Revelation 18, 21. Revelation 18, 21. Joel, brother, can you read <clears throat> and a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus, with violence, the shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. At all. As a great millstone is poured down, uh, thrown into the sea, similarly, Babylon will be thrown. See, if somebody throws a millstone inside the sea, can they lift it up? No, we can't lift it up. You see, it's very difficult. It goes so deep. And instead of lifting up, we can buy a new one. It will be so cheap. Because the expenses to lift up is more than building a new one. Hence, you see, so many ships have sunk. No, nobody has tried to lift it up because there is no use of lifting it up. Better build a new one. Therefore, dear brethren, this signifies utter destruction. The utter destruction of Babylon is such a way that it will never come up. Dear brethren, therefore, the advice to us is that uh, quit Babylon. Good that you are all quitted Babylon, you see, and left the Babylon, the false churches, and heard the truth. That's what God says. Huh? Revelation 18.4, the last, Gobal brother, Revelation 18.4, can you read? And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Uh, come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her plague. Come out of her, my people, come out. This is the call. The Israel people came out and built the temple of God and worshipped. Similarly, we need to quit Babylon and never enter. Therefore, last week, Brother Rick said, no. You see, where did Jesus feed the people of the multitudes? He never fed the, the people, uh, multitudes inside the city. He called them out of the city. City is Babylon, the great city. Called them out of the city, made them to sit on the grass. Humble, no place, no huge recognition, no big, big churches. Very small, little place. Few people, only 5,000, only 4,000. You see, but there, huge city was gathered. No. Similarly, dear brother, we need to listen to Jesus means we need to come out of uh, the false churches. Okay. May the Lord add the blessings to these uh, words. Uh, anybody has got any questions, any doubts? You can ask. Anybody, any questions? Joel, brother, any questions? Uh, no question, brother. Munan sister, any questions? No, brother. Okay. Romi sister, Amar brother, any questions? No questions, brother. No questions.